in California that when the California banned uh, using race as one factor in admissions, the admissions of black students, other students of color declined dramatically. Andrea, what isn't being talked about enough is the harm this is going to do for students, not just black and Latino students, but white and Asian American students. Consider students going to Harvard who want to become the future political leaders in this country, the future president, senators, congresspeople. Do you think they're going to have a better chance of doing that and doing that successfully if they're in classes that don't have adequate representation from African Americans and Latinos? Are they going to understand the country? Or think if someone wants to be CEO of Google or Apple in my district, I can tell you from talking to those CEOs how much they have to interact with people in every diverse community. You're doing a ter terrible disservice to the future leaders of this country in a multiracial, multi-ethnic democracy. How do you see universities now trying to tailor their admissions programs to create diverse classes? It's going to be a challenge. I mean, Justice Roberts did have that line that students can talk about race in their personal uh, essays. I, I, I imagine that uh, they will try to have a more qualitative assessment on uh, essays to comply with the uh, Supreme Court. They're going to have to look, as you've discussed earlier, about not having as many legacy emissions, uh, not having as much reliance on standardized test scores. But look, I represent an Asian American majority district. I understand some of the, the, the sentiment there. And what I say to people in my own district is many people in the Asian American community wouldn't have been in America if it weren't for the civil rights movement. My parents probably wouldn't have been in America. The civil rights movement led to the 1965 Immigration Reform Act. That's what allowed people from Asia to start immigrating to the United States. So we owe an enormous debt to the civil rights movement. And in fact, it was LBJ in 1965, right after the passage of the Voting Rights Act and uh, the Fair Housing Law and a lot of the other big major cases that gave a big speech about the importance of diversity and affirmative action. Uh, do you think that at this stage that colleges can, you know, find ways to, as you point out, standardize tests, not to use the standardized tests, which clearly advantage those schools, those kids who come from schools that have, you know, all kinds of tutoring and special prep programs for the SATs and other tests. Well, I do think they can move away for standardized tests, and I think they can look at a person's essays. Uh, again, Rob, Robert says that you can talk about race as part of your life, and the reality is race matters. Race is consequential to people's lives, and so if we are being honest about uh, the adversity folks face, the challenges they overcome, uh, they're going to talk about race, and I think that the colleges are going to have to figure out how they do that be while being consistent with uh, the court decision. But from talking to university presidents uh, who expected this decision, it's not really a surprise. They are candid that this is going to be a challenge and they're concerned about the leaders that they're going to be producing for American society. They know that this country is 60% white, non-Hispanic, that it is incredibly diverse, that race continues to be a polarizing issue, dividing our nation. And they're concerned whether they're going to be able to expose people to all all of the diversity of this country that is necessary for them to produce great leaders.